Good morning. My name is Katherine Chow. My name is William Hu. And my name is Alice Wu. For our project, we developed an in vitro system to characterize, optimize, and evaluate dental pulp stem cells for dental and bone regeneration. Today, even the most industrialized of societies are in need of better solutions to combat oral disease. Dental caries is the most prevalent infectious disease worldwide, and chronic periodontitis, which causes irreparable damage to the tooth, as shown in Figure 1, affects 47.2% of adults over 30 in the United States. And yet, existing solutions are limited to dental implants, which face the risk of implant rejection and require costly bone grafting processes, a clearly painful procedure as outlined in Figure 2. Stem cell-based tissue engineering directly answers the need for a therapeutic alternative that promotes the renewal rather than the replacement of dental tissues. Dental pulp stem cells, abbreviated as DPSDs, are a promising tool in bone regeneration as the most surgically accessible mesenchymal stem cell. DPSDs have demonstrated low morbidity rates, high interactivity with biomaterials, and extensive differentiation ability as shown in Figure 3. Most notably, surface photography has been shown to be a critical influence in cell behavior. Specifically, multi-skill pattern topographies have shown influence in cell adhesion, proliferation, and differentiation of DPSCs. And a 2006 study done by Engler et al. revealed that when plated on rigid matrices, DPSCs were capable of osteogenic differentiation. Thus, we investigated the effects of pattern surfaces without the effects of external factors like dexamethasone in order to best replicate what can be used in vivo. Our project focused on the creation of surfaces to promote extensive proliferation and induce osteogenic and endontic differentiation of DPSCs as a result of topographical influences. Our first challenge was to create surfaces with multiple length scales ranging from nano to micro in large quantities suitable for cell culture. We consider the possibility of using either lithography or 3D printing. While lithography is slow and expensive, 3D printing often has insufficient resolution to create surfaces at the nano to micro scale. Polymer phase segregation stood out to us as an extremely low cost and uh, accessible alternative capable of rapid manufacturing. By controlling the variables involved in the polymer phase segregation process, we can effectively tune and customize the structural parameters along the surfaces of our substrates. As a result, we pursued polymer phase segregation as a solution for surface creation. When two immiscible polymers are spun cast together and then annealed, they will phase segregate upon annealing above the glass transition temperature of both polymers. Polymer phase segregation occurs to minimize the energy of a two polymer system. And in figure five, polystyrene and polymethyl methacrylate are shown to phase segregate over the course of one week, creating the distinct surface patterns that we desired. Thus, we hypothesize that we can create a large variety of multi-scale patterns by mixing two immiscible polymers in different compositions and controlling their time of annealing. We chose polylactic acid and polystyrene for our polymer blend because both polymers are highly immiscible and possess a glass transition temperature lower than their degradation temperature. Both polymers can also be spun cast together since they share a common solvent of chloroform. And with these initial conditions fulfilled, they will phase segregate upon annealing. After preparing one by one centimeter silicon substrates, we individually solubilized two forms of PLA and three molecular weights of PS with chloroform. These solutions were then mixed together in three volume ratios of PLA to PS, and the final solutions were spun cast onto silicon substrates to form thin films. The thin films were then annealed in a vacuum oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 72 hours. The substrates were then left in toluene treatment for 12 hours in order to fully dissolve the PS phase. We imaged and analyzed the resulting 20 surfaces using atomic force microscopy and nanoscope analysis software. After characterizing these surface topographies, we chose four of the rough surfaces and two flat control surfaces for DPSC plating. The chosen surfaces, as shown in the right-hand corner of the slide, were a sterilized and ethylene oxide treatment done for us by Sonderbrook University. The set of images depicted on the left side of the slide shows one of our surfaces before and after toluene treatment. Using Nanoscope, we drew three cross-sections on each post-toluene image to evaluate the different surface topographies of our different substrates. Among the PLA surfaces, we chose the middle PLA substrate for its small and connected bumps, and the rightmost PLA substrate for its larger and more isolated bumps. Interestingly, while the PLA substrates on the previous slide were characterized by bumps, the PLA-MG substrates on this slide are characterized by holes. We chose the middle PLA-MG uh, PLA surface for its uniform distribution of holes along the substrate, and the 
PLA-MG server to the right of that for its mixture of both bumps and holes. As shown by the comparison image in figure six, our middle PLA-MG surface shows striking similarities to the structure of dentin, which refers to the calcified tissue that surrounds dental pulp inside the body. While dentin is typically characterized of holes ranging from one to two micrometers in diameter, our dentin-like surface, on average, was characterized by holes of 0.711 micrometers in diameter. We obtained DPSCs of strain AV3 from Stony Brook University and plated them on surfaces at either 4,500 or 9,000 cells per centimeter squared. We cultured DPSCs in a T75 flask and detached cells from the flask by adding trypsin. We then neutralized the cells using a growth media which contains fetal bovine serum that incorporates a trypsin inhibitor. On days one, three, and five, post-cell plating, we counted cells to calculate cell proliferation rates. And on day five, we stained cells for confocal imaging using Alexafluor 488 phalloidin, which is a high affinity F-actin probe conjugated to green fluorescent dye. On day 35, we imaged the substrates under the scanning electron microscope to evaluate the biomineralization deposits on each surface. And subsequently, we conducted energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy to analyze the elemental compositions of these crystals. Then we conducted RNA isolation and RT-PCR to look for differentiation markers. We analyzed the early stage proliferation data by conducting a one-tail t-test on cell count data to determine that higher plating density results in higher initial plating efficiency. However, the low density plated cells revealed much lower doubling times. In addition, the cell proliferation rates for the low-density plated cells was much higher at 18.3 cells per minute, while the high-density plated cells demonstrated rates of 15.2 cells per minute. Thus, as we look at the long-term trends of these cells, it's clear that the difference in cell plating density is negligible in the long term because cells will proliferate to cover the surface. With confocal microscopy, we evaluated the different cellular responses of the DPSCs to the various substrates. As shown by the left column of images, DPSCs plated on flat substrates were globular and unorganized, while DPSCs plated on the pattern substrates, as indicated by the second and third column set of images, showed multiple F-actin filaments extended over the surface. A comparison between the top and the bottom rows of images shows that the F-actin extended more fully on the PLA-MG surfaces. One possible explanation for this is that the, D the, PLA, the bumps along the PLA surfaces may have inhibited the full extension of the F-actin, while the holes on the PLA-MG surface were easily stretched over by the same filament. Nonetheless, the greater cellular response of the DPSCs to the PLA-MG substrates indicates that these cells prefer highly porous structures. All SEM images indicated varying levels of biomineralization on each surface, as indicated by the second and third set of images, or row of images. PLA surfaces, which were characterized by bumps, displayed non-uniform biomineralization, indicating inefficient differentiation of DPSCs. On the other hand, our porous, dentin-like substrate, as represented by the fifth row of images and the enlarged image, was characterized by directional, fiber-like arrangements and displayed the highest level of uniform biomineralization. Further EDAX analysis confirmed the presence of hydroxyapatite, which is a calcium phosphate mineral found in bone that signifies osteogenic differentiation. We isolated RNA using the phenyl method and conducted first strand cDNA synthesis using superscript 2RT. With RT-PCR, we looked for the early osteogenic marker alkaline phosphatase, the late osteogenic marker osteocalcin, and the late odontogenic marker dentine sialophosphoprotein. A comparison between the two rough PLA substrates, as shown by bar sets two and three, shows that uh, PLA substrates characterized by larger bumps induced higher levels of overall differentiation. Additionally, the two flat substrates, indicated by bar sets one and four, managed to induce higher levels of osteogenic differentiation than several of the rougher substrates, suggesting that flat topographies may be more advantageous than certain rough topographies. A comparison of the two medical grade substrates as shown in bar sets five and six reveals that pore structures that are characterized by a higher frequency of smaller pores result in the greatest levels of OCN and ALP. Thus, from our findings, we can conclude that the porous dentin-like structure um, creates the highest levels of osteogenic differentiation. Polymer phase segregation represents a novel, rapid, 
and cost-effective approach for creating surface topographies to study DPSC proliferation and differentiation. And although cell plating density had little effect over cell proliferation in the long term, SEM and EDAX analysis confirmed that surface topography alone has the ability to induce biomineralization and subsequent differentiation of DPSCs. Further RT-PCR analysis confirmed that porous structures, namely our one-to-one -one PLAMG to 45.8 kPS surface, induced greater amounts and the most amount of differentiation compared to surfaces characterized by bumps. We were able to mimic the natural topography of Denton. And in essence, our research supports the creation of porous scaffolds for promoting dental and bone regeneration. In future studies, we'd like to examine the effects of other biocompatible polymers and different PLS molecular weights on surface topography. We'd also like to optimize certain patterns for um, the cold culture of cells in order to imitate the stem cell niche, and then conduct several more trials of RT-PCR to examine the changing rates of differentiation in the long term. We'd also like to prove the degradation of our substrates after long-term incubation to support its application in vivo. Our results are promising and help elucidate the effects of dental pulp stem cell differentiation as a result of surface topography. Both are crucial factors in determining how we can regulate DPSC fate and elucidating how we can improve uh, dental pulp stem cell regeneration for bone. We would like to thank our mentors, Dr. Miriam Rafailovich and Dr. Adriana Pinka Serafova, for helping us conduct our research, and Stony Brook University for the necessary facilities and the dental pulp stem cells. Additionally, we would like to thank the Siemens Foundation, Discovery Education, and George Washington University for this phenomenal opportunity. Thank you.